Hey fragrance family, I'm Dave and I'm a fragrance bro. Welcome to the wrap up of Rose Month. And I just want to spend some time here and talk about my experiences with um, Rose Month and what I thought of some of the fragrances and answer some viewer questions here. And just got a fresh haircut. I got my Cowboy Bebop shirt on. Just had ice cream at one o'clock in the afternoon. It's a good day. First off, I just want to thank everyone who watched Rose Month. I had so much support and so many kind words. A lot of you just, a lot of you tuned in every day, and uh, many of you commented and talked about uh, your experiences. Um, and uh, some people disagreed with me, which I'm totally cool with, and some people agreed with me, which I'm totally cool with. So I really loved it on, you know, on the whole. And it couldn't have been what it was without you guys. And I also want to thank everyone who who donated um, samples and things like that. A lot of you, uh, you know, gave some from your personal collection, which is amazing. Some of you gave official samples, which is just as amazing. Some of you went overboard and uh, supplied a lot of samples, and that supplied a lot of the, the, the fragrances that I had for the month. And, um, and one person even gave a whole bottle from their collection, which was incredibly kind and generous. And so I just want to thank everyone who gave. It really made Rose Month uh, something special, and it was humbling for me uh, to have such support from uh, from people like you. So I just really appreciate you. So as for my thoughts on Rose Month, like I said in the introduction uh, video, I'm not a huge fan of Rose. So, um, uh, but I really I really like this month. For, for me, it was very informative, it was educational, and it was entertaining as well. I really liked going through and trying all these things. Um, it, it proved my worst fears <laughs> in some cases. <laughs> And uh, in a lot of cases, it really surprised me. And uh, there's one person who actually suggested I do a, like a top video for top, uh, top my, my favorite scents for Rose Month. And I'm gonna do a top five video as a separate video. So be on the lookout for that. I forgot to also thank my wife. My wife was <laughs> the real trooper here. <laughs> So I want to thank her. Um, I had to. Uh, this is our kids' playroom, and uh, for for a few days, I had uh, our our video equipment and lighting equipment kind of just hanging out here. And so she was really patient with that. And of course, she had to smell all those rose perfumes. And a lot of them she didn't mind, but some of them she did. So uh, she's really generous. I love her so much, and I just want to thank her. Um, and so she's really thrilled that Rose Month is over. She doesn't know that I have a video series of rant videos planned <laughs> and, and some book reviews to do. <laughs> okay, so let's go to some questions submitted by uh, some viewers here. Uh, the Lupe Experience, he's also a reviewer, awesome reviewer, go check out his channel. He asked a few questions uh, that I think are really great. I'm gonna go through a couple of them. Uh, one of them was, what combinations work best with Rose? Um, in my opinion, the ones that I liked the most were uh, combinations that were not Oud Rose, first of all. I do not like the Oud Rose combo. And, I, you know, for, first of all, it's getting really tired. And like, you know, Jeremy was talking about in Oud Vember. But second of all, I just don't, I don't like it. I don't think it's a very good combination. Um, and uh, what I also didn't know was how many rose patchouli combinations there were. I mean, there's a ton of them out there. And that's another kind of tired um, combination. Those I didn't hate as much because I generally like patchouli. Uh, so I thought those were, were tolerable, but those, those did get kind of boring quickly. Although there were a couple of really good ones, uh, particularly like Hippie Rose and Portrait of a Lady and uh, Rossi de Palma. Those were all really good rose patchouli combinations with some, some interesting things going on in there. Uh, but my, personally, what I really liked was when they, they, uh, they added something in there that was a little bit different. Like, I think pepper works really well. Pink pepper especially works really well. Cumin works really, weird, really well with it. I thought uh, any kind of fruity notes in there um, uh, would work really well. Anytime they added some kind of musky notes uh, with the rose worked best. And to me, as long as they had a rose note that wasn't really powdery, then I would generally be okay with a rose note. But if they had a note in there that, that seemed really kind of soapy and old and, and, and powdery, then to me it was automatically a dud. He also asked what's the diversity in the rose offerings, which I kind of touched on there. 
Uh, most of the time it's um, patchouli and rose, oud and rose, spice and rose. That's typically all you get. And there's some variations on those themes. Um, the, the more interesting uh, genre in that case usually is the spice and rose because you have so much more to work with. Um, I found that cumin worked, uh, cumin was used several times. Um, I thought, you know, I think they could probably make it like they, I think they could probably push the boundary further than they have with cumin. Um, I think you can. I think you could really go with a cumin bomb and add some rose in there, and I think it would work. I would work better because I like cumin personally. I think you do not you have to be. You do not have to be um, afraid to use these really spicy notes of the rose, and I really liked it when they did use those. Uh, Lupe also asked, "What's your gender orientation with the note, if any?" And I definitely think that rose still is one of those notes that still. To me, smells feminine, and um, you know, there's no note that really has like a, you know a particular sex or gender or you know genitals as uh, you know as it were. But so there's there's not like a it's not like set in stone. But every person brings along these preconceived ideas and uh, experiences and um, information from path from the past that dictate what a gender association would be upon these smells. So to me, every time I smell rose, uh, it smells womanly, and, you know, it smells grandmotherly a lot of times. And in general, to me, I think that um, rose works better on a woman, uh, in my opinion. Um, probably why I haven't seen a lot of hardcore men fragrances that have rose in there. I think there's still a lot of men who smell rose and they think, oh, it smells like a girl. And I don't think we have to be afraid of that. I mean, I think you could make a manly fragrance that has rose in there, like like in um, Azaro Actour, for instance. That's a very ma manly, masculine fragrance. Has rose in there, works fantastic. Um, it just it just depends on how you use it. If perfumers just go outside of the box and say we want to work with rose, how can we make this you know edgy? How can we make this masculine? I don't think it's that hard to do, and I think people can really do that. So overall, womanly but it just depends on how you use it. Lupe also asks, are you tired of wearing rose fragrances or still willing to try more? Well, I am tired of wearing rose fragrances, <laughs> but I am willing also to try more. I'm also always willing to try more. I'm always willing to, to try more rose fragrances. We'll do more, you know, if there's a popular fragrance, especially that comes out in the market that everyone seems to be talking about, we'll review it and we'll see. And Lupe's last question is, are you converted to a rose lover uh, slash appreciator, and I would say yes and no. Um, I would say appreciator, sure. Um, I would think that um, I can appreciate lots of notes that I don't like, and so uh, to the answer the lover part, no. I don't love rose in general just because of my experience with it. Even with Rose Month, you know, I, I don't think that really it's really convinced me to like rose, but it has convinced me that there are more offerings out there for rose that are good than I thought there were. So um, it's made me more open to the idea that uh, there are more, there are different types of rose fragrances out there. There's not just the grandmother, the grandmother's hug. Hemlock Sillage asked if I found a rose for bros, one I'd like to add to my collection, or if I found one that I'd like to add uh, to, to give to my wife. Uh, and I'll definitely say yes to the first one. Um, uh, in my top five video, you'll hear me answer that more thoroughly. Um, so be on the lookout for that. One to add for my, to, to give to my wife? Uh, definitely. Found a couple that I'd like my wife to have, uh, particularly Bay Rose 26. I thought that was really, really great. And then um, uh, La Fille de Berlin by Serge Luton I thought was fantastic. Especially on her, I think she would really like that a lot. Angel Rivera asked a few questions, one of them being, uh, what, made a, what made some of the rose scents that I liked? Uh, what was the rationale behind why I liked the scent, uh, basically, was one of her questions. Uh, I would say that, I mean, that's hard to answer uh, because it's such a subjective, personal thing. It's hard to really rationalize some, you know, a reason why I just kind of liked it, besides just a gut like. Um, sometimes it came down to uh, it being very artistic, like Portrait of a Lady. I really like Portrait of a Lady, especially artistically. Um, it's not a fragrance that I would probably wear a lot, but I can understand why people like it. For me, usually what I like as far as scents in general was, is first I like, you know, is it, is it unique? And um, is it wearable? 
Um, what is it masculine? Those are usually where I go to first. So is it unique? There's a lot of, of unique rose scents in there. Some of them were not so unique. Then wearable. There's a lot of these fragrances I didn't think were very wearable to me, but a lot, I loved them anyway. But um, it's not one that I would want in my collection to wear all the time. And then is it masculine? And of course, masculine was one of the more important ones in this, in this month because rose is one of the notes that I associate with kind of femininity. And, uh, and women. Um, but those three criteria are usually what I, what I prefer, how I kind of judge a fragrance. Is it, is it unique? Is it wearable? Is it masculine? Angel Rivera also asked if um, uh, versatility and performance kind of affect the way I uh, review a fragrance. And I would say generally, uh, generally no. I mean, I think um, with performance, there, there's a fine line <laughs> and uh, going, going uh, too little or too far. And you want kind of the Goldilocks zone of, of fragrances. I think that, that zone is um, kind of eight to 10 hours of performance and um, projection that kind of just hangs within arm's length. I think if, if you have both of those things, you have a great fragrance. There was a couple fragrances that went too little, like I'm thinking Bay Rose 26, uh, Pestum Rose by Eau de Tali, um, La Fille de Berlin, those are ones that had, they were light on the, uh, on the longevity side. And uh, when, it's, when it's too little or too much, a lot of times it becomes not down the to buy list for me. So it doesn't really affect the way I review it, but, but buying it does. So when they don't last that long, it kind of, you know, you know you're going to have to go somewhere that you're not going to be at for very long. And, and personally, you know, the eight to 10 hour range, I think, is about what you would spend at any one place at one time. So on average. So I think, you know, if, if you're going somewhere, you know, maybe you're going to the store or something like that, and you wanna wear something that lasts, you know, like an hour, <laughs> maybe that'll be good for you to have some of those fragrances. And then there were some fragrances I'm thinking of like uh, Zerzhov More Than Words, in which the, the performance, especially in the projection, was way too much, way too much. And that's another, uh, that's another downside too. I don't want a fragrance to, to, to signify when I'm coming if I'm two miles down the street. You know, <laughs> hey Dave, he's two miles away, I can still smell him. And uh, I want someone to kind of walk into my bubble and know that I smell good and then uh, walk out and not be able to smell me again. You know, so I don't want to have to light up the room. Uh, or have someone across the room smell who I am. I think that can become really offensive. So, um, you know, it's all personal taste and preference and even culture. So that can dictate what you think of, of, of that too. So my culture and my preference uh, dictate that I have something that is reasonable. As far as versatility, I don't think it really affects how I review or even buy in this case because I have a very moderate collection. Like I only have about 20 something bottles. And uh, to some people, that, that is admittedly huge. And to, but to many of the people out here who watch our videos, um, a lot of them are collectors. So they have many more fragrances than I do. So versatility, you know, a lot of times I will wear a fragrance for one particular type of event or one particular occasion uh, that is very, very, um, that doesn't happen very often, like Christmas or Thanksgiving. I'll wear one type of fragrance for that event. Uh, Halloween, I'll wear one type of fragrance for that. And, uh, or if I wear a coat, or if it's a rainy day. And, you know, I have, I have so many fragrances that it doesn't even matter if the versatility isn't there. I can afford to have a fragrance that only is for one thing. But for me, it doesn't really affect how I review or how I buy. Okay, and the last question is, what did I personally get out of this? And I would say, I, you know, I really liked, um, I really liked going through the journey of Rose. And, and rose is one of those fragrances that I could spend a whole year on. I mean, it's a it's a note that has that has been done a million times, probably literally, and um, and there's so many fragrances out there that have rose that I only have like a sliver. And and most of those fragrances that I had weren't even classics. I mean, a lot of them were very modern fragrances. So I didn't I didn't get a very good education on the scent from the beginning of time until till now. But overall, I think, you know, what I really learned is that there's a breadth to Rose that I didn't realize before. 
and um, that there is a lot more you can do with it than just have a grandmotherly fragrance. I really learned that you still can make it masculine, um, but I also learned that uh, a lot of perfumers uh, have, they haven't even plumbed the depths of rose yet. There are fragrances out there that are so unique and so different and then you smell these other fragrances that are so the same and so blah and you wonder like why? Why are you going in the traditional route with this note? People have been doing this for hundreds of years. Why don't you just do something very unique and knock people's socks off with rose? Do something someone's never tried before. So, um, so it, it really kind of made me jaded to, to, some, uh, to some degree and then made me excited to another degree. Overall though, I think I am excited. I, I think I'm very much looking forward to trying more rose fragrances, um, but knowing that still rose is probably not for me. And I also didn't realize how many fragrances I would like this month. I thought mostly I would probably dislike a lot of these fragrances, but, I, but generally I thought that I felt Maybe I could be wrong, but in my memory anyway, it seemed like that I generally liked most of these fragrances <clears throat> and only disliked some of them. So thank you everyone for watching Rose Month again. I just really appreciate it. And thank you for watching this long, long-winded uh, wrap-up video. If you watch to the end, you get bro knuckles. Angel Rivera left a comment that perfectly sums up my experience with Rose. It's a quote from Isaac Hayes. It says, if you enjoy the fragrance of a rose, you must accept the thorns which it bears. I'll see you later.